Peg feeds. Comprehensive training on pocutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy. Peg. Peg feed. A training guide. Welcome to this comprehensive training on pocutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy. Peg feeds. This video covers the essentials from basic concepts to practical applications in healthcare settings. We'll explore gastrostomy feeding tube types, patient demographics, feeding options, and best practices for peg management. Our aim is to equip you with the knowledge and skills for optimal enteral nutrition care. What is peg feeding? Poecutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, PEG, is a medical procedure in which a feeding tube is inserted directly into the stomach through the abdominal wall using an endoscope. Purpose. Used for long-term nutrition, hydration, and medication administration in patients who cannot eat or drink safely through the mouth. Duration. Designed for extended use, providing a more permanent solution than nasal gastric tube for patients with chronic conditions. Types of gastrostomy feeding tubes. PEG, pocutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy. Inserted endoscopically through the abdominal wall into stomach. This is the most common type used for long-term enteral feeding. Particularly suitable for patients with swallowing difficulties or chronic conditions requiring nutritional support over extended periods. OIG, radiologically inserted gastrostomy placed under x-ray guidance rather than endoscopy, offering an alternative when endoscopic placement isn't feasible. Provides a solution for patients with anatomical challenges or contraindications to endoscopy, ensuring nutritional support can still be delivered effectively. PEG, pocutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy. PEG tube placement, inserted endoscopically through the abdominal wall directly into the stomach. PEG tube device, Designed for long-term enteral nutrition delivery. Nutrition administration. Allows for direct delivery of nutrition, hydration, and medications. OIG, radiologically inserted gastrostomy. A procedure for enteral feeding tube placement that uses x-ray guidance rather than endoscopy. Radiological equipment. Rig procedures use specialized x-ray imaging to guide tube placement accurately. Placement procedure. Performed by interventional radiologists using fluoroscopic guidance for precise positioning. Completed IIG tube. Provides a reliable alternative when endoscopic peg placement isn't feasible due to anatomical considerations. Common conditions requiring peg. Neurological disorders. Stroke. Motor neuron disease. MND. Multiple sclerosis. MS. Cerebral palsy head and neck conditions, cancers affecting mouth, throat cancers, esophageal cancers, gastrointestinal disorders, upper GI obstructions, severe GERD, short bowel syndrome, metabolic and genetic disorders, cystic fibrosis, severe malnutrition, failure to thrive, pediatric. Healthcare settings for peg feeding, hospitals, neurology and stroke units, oncology wards, intensive care units, ICUs, and high dependency units all regularly utilize PEG feeding for patients requiring nutritional support. Domiciliary care. Patients who require long-term enteral feeding at home with support provided by community nurses and trained caregivers to manage daily feeding requirements. Palliative care. Ensuring comfort and adequate nutrition for terminally ill patients helping to maintain quality of life and manage symptoms during end-of-life care. Community settings. Specialized enteral feeding teams managing patients in outpatient clinics, along with long-term care facilities and nursing homes providing ongoing PEG feeding support. Liquidized food versus commercial feeds. Liquidized food, not routinely recommended due to significant risks of tube blockage and infection. Only used when specifically assessed and approved by a dietitian. Requires meticulous preparation to ensure safety and adequate nutritional content. Commercial feeds. Professionally formulated to provide complete nutrition in a sterile, consistent form. Designed to prevent complications such as malnutrition, dehydration, and electrolyte imbalances through carefully balanced formulations. Prescription and monitoring. Feeds are prescribed by a dietitian and regularly reviewed based on patient progress. 
Adjustments are made according to weight changes, hydration status, and evolving clinical needs. Types of commercial feeds. Bolus feeds. Delivered via syringe using gravity to administer the feed. This method allows for intermittent feeding, mimicking normal meal patterns throughout the day. Typically administered four to six times daily, bolus feeding can provide a more natural feeding rhythm and may be preferred for patients who can tolerate larger volumes at once. Continuous feeds. Administered using a feeding pump over a prolonged period for controlled delivery. This method provides a steady flow of nutrition over several hours, particularly beneficial for patients with limited tolerance for larger volumes or those requiring precise control of feeding rates, often used overnight to ensure adequate nutrition. Why different feeds? Individualized care, tailored to specific patient needs, safety and consistency, sterile and pH balanced formulations, nutritional completeness, comprehensive nutrient profile, Commercial feeds are specifically designed to meet individual nutritional requirements based on a patient's condition, weight, and metabolic needs. The variety of formulations available allows healthcare professionals to select the most appropriate option for each patient. These feeds provide consistent, sterile nutrition that helps prevent complications such as malnutrition, dehydration, and electrolyte imbalances. Regular monitoring ensures a feeding regimen remains optimal as a patient's condition evolves. X-ray confirmation for peg placement. Purpose. X-ray is the most reliable method to confirm that the peg tube is properly placed in the stomach, ensuring patient safety before initiating feeding. Timing. Performed immediately post-insertion to verify correct positioning and whenever there is suspicion of tube displacement or migration. Indication for additional X-rays. When patients exhibit unexplained pain, bloating, signs of aspiration, or when feeding resistance is encountered, suggesting potential complications. Alternative methods of peg placement verification. pH testing. A small amount of gastric aspirate is drawn using a syringe. Normal gastric pH should be less than or equal to 5.5, confirming stomach placement. Limitations. pH may be altered by acid-reducing medications, e.g. PPIs, antacids, and it can be difficult to aspirate stomach contents in some patients. Auscultation, less reliable. A small amount of air, 10 to 20 milliliters, is injected into the peg tube while a stethoscope is placed over the stomach. A whooshing sound confirms air entry into the stomach. Limitations, can falsely suggest correct placement even if the tube is in the esophagus or lungs. Less reliable than pH testing and x-ray. X-ray, gold standard, provides definitive confirmation of tube placement, required when other methods yield uncertain results or when complications are suspected. Always confirm placement post-insertion, using X-ray before initiating feeding to ensure patient safety. NICE guideline compliance for PEG feeds. Follow NHS enteral feeding policy. Ensure accurate placement verification before feeding. Implement QCS policies, document verification, and ongoing monitoring. Maintain staff competency, regular training and assessment. Adherence to national guidelines is essential for ensuring patient safety and quality care. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE, provides comprehensive guidance on enteral tube feeding that must be followed in all healthcare settings. If uncertainty remains after pH testing and auscultation, radiological verification, X-ray, is mandatory before initiating feeding. This multi-step verification process helps prevent potentially serious complications from tube misplacement. Key safety protocols for PEG verification. X-ray confirmation. Always confirm placement post-insertion before initiating feeding. pH testing. Use as routine bedside verification method, pH less than or equal to 5.5. Documentation. Record all verification steps in patient records. Guideline adherence. Follow NICE, NHS, and QCS protocols consistently. Peg tube care and maintenance. Daily cleaning. Clean the stoma site with mild soap and water, gently rotating the external disc to prevent adhesions. Pat dry thoroughly and inspect for signs of infection or irritation. Regular flushing.
Flush the chew with 30 to 50 milliliters of water before and after each feed or medication administration to prevent blockages. Use room temperature water and gentle pressure. Weekly inspection. Check the tube for signs of wear, damage, or discoloration. Ensure the external fixation device is secure but not too tight against the skin. Potential complications of peg feeding, infection, stoma site infection, peritonitis, tube issues, blockage, displacement, leakage, digestive problems, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, aspiration, feed entering respiratory tract. Vigilant monitoring and prompt intervention are essential for preventing and managing complications associated with peg feeding. Regular assessment of the stoma site, proper positioning during feeding, and adherence to infection control protocols can significantly reduce complication risks. Healthcare providers should be trained to recognize early warning signs and implement appropriate interventions before complications become severe. Patient and caregiver education is also crucial for early detection of problems. Troubleshooting peg tube problems. Problem. Tube blockage. Possible causes. Flushing. Medication residue. Thick feeds. Interventions. Flush with warm water. Gentle pressure using 50 milliliter syringe. Problem. Stoma infection. Possible causes. Poor hygiene. Excessive moisture. Tube movement. Interventions. Clean with antiseptic. Dry thoroughly, antimicrobial treatment if needed. Problem, tube displacement. Possible causes, accidental pulling, balloon deflation. Interventions, stop feeding, secure tube, arrange x-ray verification. Problem, leakage around site. Possible causes, tube deterioration, stoma enlargement. Interventions, check balloon volume, protect skin, consider tube replacement. Medication administration via PEG. Preparation. Check medication suitability for enteral administration. Use liquid formulations when available. Crush tablets only if approved by pharmacy. Never crush enteric coated or sustained release medications. Administration. Flush tube with 30 milliliters water before medication. Administer each medication separately with a flush between different medications. Never add medication directly to feed. Completion. Flush tube with 30 to 50 milliliters water after all medications. Document administration in patient records. Monitor for effectiveness and side effects. Patient and caregiver education. Hands-on training. Provide practical demonstrations of tube K, feeding techniques, and troubleshooting. Allow supervised practice until competence is achieved. Ensure caregivers understand the importance of proper hand hygiene. Educational resources. Supply written instructions, video tutorials, and pictorial guides. Provide emergency contact information and clear guidelines on when to seek medical help. Offer resources in appropriate languages and literacy levels. Follow-up support. Schedule regular check-ins to assess technique and address concerns. Provide access to nutrition specialists and enteral feeding teams. Establish peer support connections when appropriate. Nutritional monitoring and assessment. Ethical considerations in peg feeding. Peg feeding involves significant ethical considerations, particularly regarding patient autonomy, quality of life, and end-of-life care. Decisions should involve multidisciplinary team input and respect for patient wishes expressed through advanced directives. For patients unable to communicate, careful assessment of best interests is essential involving family members and considering the patient's previously expressed values. Regular review of the continuing appropriateness of peg feeding is necessary, especially in progressive conditions. Key takeaways and best practices. Safety first. Always confirm tube placement before feeding. Follow verification protocols rigorously. Maintain strict infection control practices to prevent complications. Individualize care. Tailor feeding regimens to patient needs. Regular nutritional assessment and monitoring. Adjust care plans as patient conditions evolve. Education and support. Comprehensive training for patients and caregivers. 
provide accessible resources and ongoing support, ensure clear communication between healthcare teams, ethical practice, respect patient autonomy and wishes, regular review of feeding appropriateness, multidisciplinary approach to decision-making. 78-year-old patient with post-stroke dysphagia, case study showing key phases in Mr. Thompson's peg feeding journey. Initial presentation, Mr. Thompson presented with severe dysphagia following an ischemic stroke with significant weight loss of 7 kilograms over just three weeks after failed swallowing rehabilitation attempts. Peg placement. A peg tube was placed using endoscopic guidance with x-ray confirmation to ensure proper positioning and safety. Initial challenges. Early complications included peristomal infection and tube blockage due to medication administration errors requiring intervention. Education and protocol implementation. Following implementation of standardized protocols and comprehensive caregiver education, complications were successfully managed. Outcome. Mr. Thompson achieved nutritional stability with albumin levels improving from 28 GOL to 36 GOL over three months, demonstrating successful long-term peg management. Case study. 55-year-old patient with dysphagia, peg feeding journey. Mrs. Jenkins presented with progressive dysphagia following diagnosis of advanced esophageal cancer, experiencing significant nutritional decline with 9 kilograms weight loss over 6 weeks despite dietary modifications. Initial assessment. Multidisciplinary evaluation confirmed severe dysphagia with aspiration risk. Nutritional status showed albumin levels of 27 GOL indicating significant malnutrition. Peg placement procedure. Successful endoscopic placement with radiological confirmation. Initial feeding regimen established with commercial polymeric formula at 40 milliliters per hour. Complications and management. Patient experienced granulation tissue formation and minor leakage around insertion site by week three. Treated with silver nitrate application and improved stoma care protocols. Nutritional recovery. By month two, Patient showed significant improvement with weight gain of 3.5 kilograms and albumin levels increased to 34 GOL feed rate gradually increased to 80 milliliters per hour. Home management. Comprehensive training provided to patient and family members. Transition to home care with community nursing support and regular dietetic follow-up established. This case demonstrates successful peg feeding implementation in oncology patients, highlighting the importance of early intervention, complication management, and comprehensive training for optimal outcomes. More on this via our training portal, www.abramsgrp.com. Get in touch, training at abramshealthcare.co.uk. Call us, plus 44115-777-0127.